I thought I'd show you what I've been working on for the past few days. I actually had a meeting with some county park officials about a food forest park and I really don't expect it to go anywhere but I did get the meeting and I presented this idea for them for a permaculture food forest park. Now I am missing some of the nitrogen fixing trees that would be surrounding these trees but I didn't want to hit them with too much at one time. The idea is that they have over 200 parks in their system. Maybe we can get one of these parks to be like this, a food forest park. And I thought, wow, this would be a huge benefit to anybody who lives by a park like this. You imagine you just walking through a park like this and you could pick out your whole meal for the day. And there's a bunch of wonderful trees in this system specifically designed for a zone 10 so a lot of people aren't zone 10 you might be zone 8 zone 7 you could probably take some of these ideas and add them to your own uh, permaculture system if you have some land you want to develop and you want to do something like this you could take out some of these zone 10 plants and add your zone 9 zone 8s but the, the basic concept is there the idea is that in a flatland you have your ponds in the northern part and they're stocked with fish and the excrement would be going through the swales. The swales are designed to hold moisture in the soil so you could go long periods of time without rain. So the idea here is to have permaculture systems set up where it's self-sustaining, where it could survive on its own for several years without much having to be done to into the system so you're not having to put herbicides in there you're not having to add pesticides for bug control you because it's a diverse system we're bringing in insects that will control other insects and since you have such a diverse system you're not having one insect that can take over your whole system and ruin it which is a monoculture system and that's a great thing about a permaculture system when you have a diverse food forest is that there's always something in production. There's always something that's available that you can eat there, which is great. The idea of the fish ponds is you're going to have lots of fish to eat. You're going to have fertilization from the fish pond, fertilizing your fruit trees on the swales. And the swales are designed to capture water, to keep that water inside of your system and not just move off the property. The idea I had was to have moringa around the fish ponds because what moringa does is makes these wonderful seed pods that the seeds, when they break down, they actually help filter the water inside of the fish pond. So you can remove some of the contaminations and keep the fish pond healthy those would actually move around the swale and it would be like a filtering process be nice to have the bananas around the fish pond because bananas like a lot of water same with coconuts they love a lot of water and also the idea is to have worm casting bins because worms make excellent fertilizer we have the bunion nut in there which makes these huge cones which are getting a very tasty nut the shells are also great for cooking meat we have carob in this system carob is wonderful carob it's a chocolate substitute and also carob is very good for flus sore throats we have custard apple custard apple is delicious neem growing neem you can make insect repellent with it it can actually remove harmful parasites from the body i know in india they make toothbrushes with it great for your teeth ice cream bean is excellent it goes by several names but basically it's a seed pod and it's surrounded by this cotton material that tastes like almost like a cotton candy cocoa cocoa grows very good underneath the ice cream bean cocoa most of it's produced around the equator but some of it can grow in zone 10 under the right conditions lychee lychee works in zone 10 it's very delicious fruit now as you can see here barbado cherry barbado cherry is 
loaded with vitamin C. You can eat, actually even eat the fruit green and it still tastes good. Now the idea here is around the greenhouse is to have some Bolivian sunflower growing and that's a good chop and drop plant. It's like a green fertilizer. Same with pigeon pea. Uh, Bolivian sunflowers are nice. They can grow up to 20 feet tall. Be great to have weeping willow just to have it for that's where they get aspirin from, but it, they make a synthetic derivative out of it. But with weeping willow, it's uh, I mean that's what the Indians use for pain management. But also another great great thing about weeping willow is it's a rooting hormone. So you could take cuttings, you can make roots with the weeping willow. Ideas also have passion fruits on the fence line. You see a lot of people they spray crap around their fence to get rid of vines but instead of doing that just have passion fruits grow on your fence line we're going around guanabana guanabana leaves very good cancer treatment also the fruit tastes amazing it's like a pineapple and an apple thrown together very delicious mango there's about 150 varieties of mangoes florida grande peach doesn't need that many chill hours. I think it's about 50 chill hours or 100 chill hours, and you can get peaches in uh, South Florida. Hog plum. When you hear hog, you think of pig, plum, or something, but let me tell you, these are delicious. Some have tasted even more delicious than mango. If I had to pin it, I'd say it's kind of like a citrusy plum. It's like an orange and a plum mixed together. It's delicious. Banana circle. Banana circles are great because you can grow a lot more bananas when you have a banana circle and then you put a compost in the middle. You can have about 20 times the production using a banana circle system. Macadamias, uh, considering what's going on with the Brazilian forest burning and then you have Hawaii, one of the major producers, and I wouldn't want to have any uh, fruits out of Hawaii just because of the Pacific issues with Fukushima. So macadamia can grow in zone 10 curry curries really has a lot of health benefits and helps spice up food uh, regular grapes don't do good in south florida so muscadine seems to handle the heat better jabba de Caba, very popular brazilian fruit the fruits grow right off the bark very interesting tree tasty maja de coca it has some health benefits but it also helps regular cocoa grow underneath it green tea green tea can grow in zone 10 it's good zone 10 plant but the problem that we have in south florida is our soil is very alkaline due to all the limestone so green tea has a problem but if you want to grow your green tea you can grow it underneath pine trees because the pine needles help acidify the soil and green tea will do good there so that's just an idea if you have some pine trees South Florida, grow green tea under it, it should do very well, along with your blueberries as well. Blueberries like acidic soil. So that's just a thought, is to use pine trees. Vanilla. Vanilla is very rare, very expensive. Vanilla can grow here under the right conditions. Uh, you only have one day out of the year where you can pollinate the flower, so you got to really time that out, or you have to have special type of bees that really, they're not available in Florida to my knowledge. Holy basil, that's really good for removing fluoride from the water. Grapefruit, you can make cleaning products with it. Tastes good. It's a really good root stock. Finger limes, if you haven't heard of finger limes, they originally come out of Australia. Looks really good on a plate, really tasty. Tamarindo, that's also good for removing fluoride from water. It has a lot of health benefits, lots of vitamin C, good for sore throats. Sapodillo, that's a really good fruit. Actually, it's kind of like an apple with brown sugar. That's the sapodillo. Canistel, that's the egg fruit. Tastes kind of like an egg, but more sweet. Over here, we have arugula. Arugula is really good. It grows fast. You can grow it in under 20 days. It's ready to harvest cut it back keeps growing get a few cuts on that one dragon fruit there are a few different varieties of dragon fruit I really like the red one with the red insides so it tastes really good baobab you've seen these trees out of Madagascar baobab can grow in zone 10 
people do eat the fruit. These trees get so big, they can hold lots of water. There's actually a bar, I believe, in South Africa where they fit 17 people inside of a baobab tree. Agave. You can make tequila out of it. <laughs> it's really good stuff. You can make great sugar out of it. Pomegranate. There's actually one pomegranate that's amazing. It's in between a tangerine and a pomegranate. It's very weird how the seeds look too. Not like a typical pomegranate. But I believe it's called a scalabra pomegranate. Very tasty. Very good. Chidiboya. That's one of the best tasting fruits you ever find. That can grow in zone 10. Typically it's 8 in Peru. It's one of the anonias. Very seedy. The seeds are poisonous. So you don't want to eat those. But uh, it's the flesh is delicious. Also, sugar cane would do good around a fish pond. Never had sugar cane juice is definitely something you want to try. Moringa, they call it the tree of life in Africa because it's one of the plants that has the most protein and different types of amino acids. It's almost complete. So they use it a lot for people that are starving to get nourished. As a matter of fact, in some of these starving countries like Cuba, they started to grow moringa just for that purpose. I wonder why aren't they doing this in Venezuela as well? Because moringa could grow in Venezuela and you have a lot of people are starving over there. So it makes sense for them to grow lots of moringa. Actually, I've been eating moringa myself. I have a couple of trees. It's such an interesting plant. It's really good at reproducing itself, growing roots. So I'll cut a branch. I'll take off the leaves. I'll even eat the flowers. If you eat it raw, it does have like an aftertaste, like a kind of like a little sharp taste there, like a horseradish taste. I can throw some in a salad, it's okay. But if you want to get rid of that taste, you just cook it a little bit and that taste goes away and it's delicious. So I'll eat it with eggs. Uh, you can make it, put it in soups. Very versatile plant. Cut off a branch, replant it. You got a new plant. In the south, probably the best bush to grow is the southern high bush blueberry. And you do want to grow that underneath pine trees, like the pineus pinea. Get some pine nuts. Miracle fruit. Miracle fruit is also out of Africa, but it does need acidic soil. But you could grow that underneath the pine nut trees. Miracle fruit. These little red fruits, but you eat one of these fruits, and it will actually make other fruits taste more sweet. So even if you got sour fruits, it'll make those taste super sweet. So it kind of tricks your taste buds. So it's a great fruit to eat before you eat other fruits. And it'll take that metally taste. If somebody is on chemo, it'll take that metally taste out their mouth. Or some people that lost their taste buds, they can get that sensation back for an hour after they had a miracle fruit. It's a really interesting plant. Purple potato. Those purple potatoes got a lot more vitamins and minerals. Very healthy, tasty. This potato is very productive. It makes a lot of vines and about every 10 inches or so you'll have roots where you can cut off each plant. So this plant will grow very productive. You can have it underneath your feet through your garden. It'll really take over and you have tons of purple potatoes in no time. Watermelon would be nice to have. Make sure you get the seeded watermelon, not the seedless. You don't want any genetically modified crap in your system. And actually the seeds are very healthy for you as well. Guava. There's lots of guavas that can grow in zone 10. There is actually a sour guava that's so delicious. It's, it's a yellow looking guava. Very good. Lucuma. It's also related to the canistel, but this is the Peruvian variety. It has a lot more flavor. They make ice cream with it. Very tasty fruit. Figs. Figs are great. Got a little spooked when I found out they're kind of fertilized by wasps that actually get stuck inside the flower and they kind of the fig will break down the wasp, <laughs> so you get like a protein add to your fig. I still love them. I still eat them. Figs are great for you. Yakun. If you never heard of yakun, it's called Peruvian ground apple. It actually helps people lose weight. They make a sugar with it, and it helps people lose weight rather than gain. Awesome plant. Tastes very good. Mulberries. Mulberries can grow several different zones besides zone 10 you might be able to get with it zone 8 certain bugs like the leaves i believe it's the paper mulberry to make so you will find that the pakistani mulberry is much more larger than the american mulberry 
It's about five times the size. If you want a lot of good fruit, it's a very tasty one. Uh, you don't typically find mulberries in the stores just because the fruit doesn't hold up for, for that many days. So I usually eat them fresh off the tree, but they are so delicious. Alfalfa I had here, that's a good chop and drop plant for your plants. The idea was also to have a distiller just so you can process, so you can make your own essential oils out of all this. Turmeric, it'd be good to grow your own turmeric. Because they did a study, they're finding a lot of the turmerics that are coming out of India that they're grown in soil that's lead contaminated and other contaminations. I think about 80% of the turmeric that people are buying in the store, they're growing in a bad environment. I grow turmeric in my garden. It's a little slow when it first comes out, but I got a lot of it growing. You can take the little tubers and split them up and you can get about 20 times the turmeric you started with from the year before. Turmeric's really good to eat with black pepper. The black pepper helps your body absorb minerals, absorb the nutrients from the turmeric. So my idea is to let residents take home a pound of food in exchange for a pound of veggie scraps because you want your system to not be a leaky system. You want to be adding lots of organic material if you have people taking out material. So just to keep that process going. So I thought that'd be an idea. People bring in their veggie scraps and they could take home a pound of food and let people eat while they're there what they want and the idea is to have lots of nitrogen fixing plants around the fruit trees for chop and drops Bolivian sunflower the acacias there's a few other like pigeon pea things like that green fertilizer the idea was to have the the fish ponds on the north side of the property on usually on flatlands you have a slow gradual incline of the water so you have these swells going east west east west to slowly capture keep that water in the system so you don't have to water as much have a butterfly garden well this is my idea i presented it to the county park officials they say they have about 250 parks and they have to divide the money that they get in between 250 parks they're waiting to get a grant hopefully what they the money they have is expiring in 2020 what this is the idea i presented to them a food forest park i think Ideally, this is a place that people could go, maybe have a bicycle on the outer part. People want to bicycle around it, have trails on the inside with around the swales. I mean, it could be a beautiful place, beautiful park. A lot of people got caught up in just the landscaping plants that don't make fruit. I don't know if, what happened with people now that they think something that grows fruit is a bad thing. And you have like this Babylon mentality where it's just a land of no fruit trees i don't know how this idea got accepted into the mainstream to me this is like the perfect part i'm not really expecting the state officials to take it but they did take pictures of this idea i presented it to them and hey at least i tried if you want to take this idea you're welcome to you're not zone 10 probably i just used uh, microsoft paint to do this so you could erase it add your own and the idea is to have a self-sustaining system i thought the fish ponds would be great because there's a lot of people that still want to eat fish they don't want to eat fish out of the, the oceans and you'd rather have safe fish you don't want a, a farm raised fish but this would be different than a farm raised fish because you're not feeding the fish a bunch of crap the moringa is actually really good. It falls in the water. The fish could eat the moringa and you have some super powerful healthy fish. And that is the idea. You don't want a crowded system. I'd like to thank you for looking at this idea. And like I said, you're welcome to take it and run with it. Show me some pictures. Show me what you did. Show me if you got a food forest. Comment down below and share some links. I'd love to see it. See what you're doing. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you soon.